All right. God is good. Hey, y'all don't sound too ready. Y'all don't sound too ready. Let's get this started one more time. All right. I told you all I'm coming from New York City. I made that very clear. When I stand in front of them, they are the loudest church. When I stand in front of First Ghana, they are the loudest church. But I need to make sure that since I'm here in Columbus, y'all need to make sure y'all are even louder than First Ghana and Queens where I reside. So we're going to do this one more time, all right? God is good. And all the time. God is excellent. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is so good to me. Turn to your neighbor on your right. And turn to the one on your left. God is so good to me. And then turn behind you. God is so good to me. (laughs) All right, let's let's bring it all in. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's have a word of prayer. Let's all be silent as we have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for everything you keep on doing. I pray that, Lord, may your Holy Spirit come down on this place. And I pray that, Lord, may the message I preach this evening may not be of my own, but will be of yours. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. So Joseph said, this is the sixth night. I even lost count because this revival has been the greatest revival. But I can't believe it. The sixth night, and we are almost through with this youth revival. But obviously, there's still a lot more ground that we need to cover in this youth revival. But as you all know, the greatest, I think Columbus has had the greatest theme in terms of a youth revival. What is our theme again? The struggle is what? The struggle is what? The struggle is real. Today I came by, I think it's called Sunbridge, right? Is it Sunbridge or, or am I wrong? The summer program, I think it's called Sunbridge. Uh, uh, sunlight, oh, 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 mercy, 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 man. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I came in today and I, and I saw people doing homework. They had activities going on. I'm like, man, in the summer, y'all should be vacationing. The struggle is definitely real for you all. But hey, by God's grace, you all are still getting knowledge, and that's what matters most. Because this youth revival, I want to make sure everyone is getting knowledge about what you can do even though the struggle is real. So everybody, one more time. The struggle is what? Real. The struggle is what? The struggle is real. So this evening's message is very special to me, and I hope it's going to be very special to you all. So everybody, don't miss what tonight's message has to cover. Everybody understand this. The first evening, single evening, I talked about how the fact that though the struggle is real, each and every one of you have been called. It doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your experience, it doesn't matter your resume, but each and every one of you have been called. I came back on Saturday morning and talked about the real MVP. I said, despite any kind of conditions that you have, the struggle should not be real because Jesus is on your side. So I came back last night. We talked through all of that. We talked through the different struggles, how you could be in a struggle but not struggling. But this evening, I got a word for you all. You see, last night we talked about baptism. And praise God to those of you who heeded to the appeal call. We talked about what it means to get baptized. But even though I talked about what it means to get baptized, some of you came back today and it's like, Preacher, I understand what it means to get baptized, but what does a new life mean? in Jesus Christ look like? What does a new life in Jesus, what happens after I go down into the water? Because we understood yesterday, right? The Ethiopian eunuch went down into the water through immersion, right? And started rejoicing. And we said, that is the greatest celebration. But this evening, some of you are like, after I go down into the water, what happens to Kofi? What happens to Henry? What happens to Lisa? What happens after you get baptized? How do you look? Do you stay the same or do you become a different person? So this evening, I kind of want you all to venture with me and let's understand what it means when after you become baptized, what does that new person become? And everybody remember, our hashtag is still the struggle is lit. So anything hot, make sure you use the hashtag the struggle is lit. And hopefully tomorrow we'll read some of the tweets because you all have been doing a phenomenal, even the visitors have been tweeting. So that's what I'm talking about. But this evening, I want us to understand 
what does a new person in Christ look like? So this evening, my message is called A New You. Everybody say it with me. A new what? A new what? A new you. I've gone, look, preacher, 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 on Saturday, on Saturday, I'm going into the water. After I come out of the water, how am I going to look like? What is my life going to be? How I am going to react? So I want you to understand that after you go down into the waters, after you make that decision to commit to Jesus through baptism, you are going to become a new person. So let me help you all illustrate that, all right? Everybody, we all know what youth camp is all about, right? Everybody knows what youth camp is. If you don't know what youth camp is, think of it like a camp meeting or a retreat or a family or a church gathering. So everybody understand this. Before youth camp, the one week, the one week before youth camp, everybody check this out because I know everybody understands my struggle. The one week before youth camp is the craziest week, right? Everybody understand this. The week before youth camp, either you hike, you hike, yo, I'm going to camp, I'm going to see my boys from the ATL, I'm going to see my boys from New York. The week before youth camp, you were so hyped, but we understand this. Before you go to youth camp in the following week, there's a couple of things you need to do. Because understand this, before youth camp, you usually look like this person right here, right? You look so ragged up, you scruffed up. Yo, you don't, you, you, if, if, if anybody was to see you before youth camp, it, it's not you, right? You're not getting the ladies. You're not going to get your future due. Because before youth camp, you do not look clean. Before camp meeting, your hair is not going to look like how it will look like the next week. But everybody understand this. Though before youth camp, I don't look my best, I don't smell my best, I don't feel the best, I want everybody to understand this picture. When it comes down to youth camp, when it comes down to the week of youth camp, I look like this dude right here, or you all can say that I have cleaned up from the week before, because before youth camp, I look like a scrubbed up person, but I know that I'm going to meet my friends, I'm going to meet people, I'm going to try and meet my future partner. After that, I realized that I need to clean up. Anybody with me this evening? Anybody with me this evening? That youth camp, you looking your best. Right? Your hairline is, is on point, right? The hairline ain't crooked, ain't none of that, right? Your beard is trimmed up, your clothes, you got the best outfit. If you even wear some of them hot glasses, you wearing them hot glasses, so you want everybody to be checking you out. The reason is this. Everybody understand why we do this. The reason we go so hard for that one week, because it's a big event. It's big. Youth camp is big. I'm going to see everybody that I haven't seen. I I have to look my best. Understand this. We do this because we make sure that people respect us. We want to make sure that when people see us, they see a new you, right? You're not looking like how you looked the week before. You have a new image. You are brand new. And I want you to understand this evening. After you make that commitment towards Jesus Christ, after you've been baptized into Jesus Christ, you come out not looking like the guy who was scrubbed up, but you come out looking like the other person. You come out looking clean up because you understand that being baptized is a big event and I need to make sure I look brand new. And this evening, I want you to understand, once you become baptized into Jesus, you don't look scrubbed up, you don't look hit up, but what you will look is the best brand new person possible. Amen? Amen. So, so let's get right into it, right? My key text is Galatians 5, verse 22, verse 23. This text is important. This text gives the meaning as to what a new person, baptized, committed to Jesus, takes Jesus as his personal savior. This is what this new person looks like. Galatians 5, 22, 23 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control against such things, there is no law. Everybody, everybody, let's understand this. God is so good to us. Let me tell you why God is so good to us. Because after we go through immersion, after we say, look, on Saturday, this Saturday, I'm going to be baptized, I'm going to be a new person. This is what God gives you. 
God doesn't just give you one thing. He doesn't just give you two things. But what I see in the text is that he gives you love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. Because what happens is that once you become a brand new person in Jesus, these qualities belong to you. And let me understand and break down these qualities Jesus gives you. Let me start with the, the number one thing. The number one says this. Once you be committed to Jesus, baptized into Jesus, the first thing that Jesus gives you is the spirit of love. Some of you are not convinced. Let me help you out. Let me help you out. Not convinced. You see, for me, I love grapes. If there's any kind of fruit I love, I don't like bananas because I don't like the shape. I don't like apples. It doesn't taste good to me. But if anything, I know this. Right? Right? Everybody settle down. Bananas is good for you. Bananas is good for you. But anyways, the first thing is this. The one fruit that I love is grapes. And I tell you this, I will kill you for grapes. If I could get grapes, I'm going hard on those grapes because that is my favorite fruit. But let's understand something about grapes. You see, grapes, in order for you to eat them, they first need to grow. Everybody, understand, everybody check this out. They need to grow. So understand this, the fruit of the Spirit, everybody look at the text, but the fruit of the Spirit is love. God could have easily said, but the fruit of the Spirit is joy. He could have started with joy. He could have started with forbearance. He could have started with kindness. But what I see here, when you become a new person in Christ, the first thing that Jesus gives you is the fruit of love. And let me help you understand this. This is why love is most important. Before this grape becomes this lovely fruit, you have to understand that it has its roots. Now, if the roots are no good, this fruit cannot grow. So it's very important that this grape that is growing up, this grape that you're going to eat, you have to make sure that the roots are good enough. And I'm so glad that when it comes to Jesus Christ, and I'm going to show you something right here. When it comes to Jesus Christ, the first thing that he gives us before joy, before forbearance, before kindness, before gladness, the thing that he gives you, the root of everything that's going to be in you once you become a new person in Christ is love. Because love, then everything falls into place. Love is the root that will pump your roots and make you grow as a Christian. But everybody understand what's going on. Because some of you don't understand. So let me help you get to my first point. My first point is this. Love is the root. Everybody understand this. Tweet this, Snapchat this, Instagram this. Love is the root which avoids cheating on Christ and instead provides loyalty unto Christ. Mm, what does that mean? Right? We understand this. I said that the first thing that Jesus gives you is what we call the fruit of the Spirit. First thing. So understand this. Because love is the first thing, we see that love is the root which avoids cheating on Christ and instead provides loyalty unto Christ. What does that mean? Let me help you all understand it. You see, there's something in life called friends with benefits. Now, this is how a friend with benefits works. Can I, can I help you all explain this? You see, when you meet a certain woman, there's either two kind of options. Either you are in a serious relationship or she becomes a friend with benefits. Now, what happens in a friend with benefits? On a friend with benefits, there are certain terms. When a friend with benefits... There is no investment into the relationship. When I need something, I call you up and that's it. We're not going to be in public. I'm not taking you out to a five-star um, restaurant. I'm not going to clean for you. I'm not going to do anything because when I'm a friend with benefits with you, there is certain limitations on our relationship. Now, let's look at a real relationship. In a real relationship, in a serious relationship, what happens is that because you love that person, 
key thing is this. Because love is the root of your relationship, you are not going to avoid cheating on that person because love will make you go all the way for that person. And it's the same way with Jesus Christ. As soon as you become a new person in Jesus, the first thing that matters to you is this. The love that Jesus gives you will allow you to do anything for Christ. Allow you to be committed to Christ. Allow you to give your heart to Christ because love is the root that becomes embedded in you once you become a new person in Jesus Christ. Because I want to make sure this is clear. You see, we treat God like a friend with benefits. We only go to God when we need something. Am, am I lying here? Homeboy would never pray to God unless he got a test coming up. He's like, oh, snap, I need to pray to God right now. Homeboy would never do his devotion until he got into a car accident the night before and they said, oh, snap, I need to make sure that I'm with my Bible and my Jesus is right. Another person will use God for their benefits. I need a woman, I need a man, so let me pray to God and try and get this man, but I'm never going to do nothing else with God. What has happened here is that God has become a friend with benefits. Well, understand this. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Love, once you become baptized, understand me real clear, once you become baptized, because the love of Jesus Christ is in you, you won't treat God like a friend with benefit. But what you do is that because Jesus has done so much for you, you will stay committed to Jesus Christ. Because love is the first fruit that Jesus is going to give you. This evening, some of you are looking to get baptized. Some of you are having problems in your life, problems in your relationships, problems in your workplace, problems in your friendship circles. But I want you to understand this evening, once you become baptized and committed to Jesus Christ, because the love of Jesus Christ is in you, you are going to go all the way. Amen? Well, let's see the next thing that says here. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, but the next thing is joy. Everybody understand this? You see, I, I told you all this evening, once you become a new person in Jesus Christ, right? I'm brand new, right? Got this brand new suit on, brand new turtleneck on. Once I become this brand new person in Jesus Christ, I'm brand new. I have the gift of love in me. But understand this. Another gift that Jesus gives me is the gift of joy. And everybody understand what joy does in your life once you become a new person in Christ. A new life in Christ will give you a joy that will get you through difficult situations. Mm, somebody better Snapchat tweet that. Once you have joy in your life, he will make sure that he, any kind of situation that is difficult, God will give you joy in your life. What does that mean? Let me paint the picture for you. You see, I realized in college, right, I was a stellar student in high school. High school, I was in AP class. I was in one of the top classes. I did everything I needed to do. Papers. Kofi was the man to look towards to, right? I was good among my peers. I killed it. In Southern New York, we have regions. I took all the tests, passed them all. But understand this. I got to college. High school and college became two different things. I don't know if somebody's with me. That transition from high school to college is totally different. So I went to college. Now we have something called English 101, the first class in English. So we had to write a paper for English class. So I'm over there. I'm like, yo, I was in AP English. Man, I was in the best English class in high school. This is going to be easy. It's going to be easy. I had, I had that cocky feeling, right? I'm like, man, I'm the man. I can write. I can talk. When it comes down to writing, it's like, dun, dun, dun. It's, it's all good. 
So understand, understand what happened here. I turn in my paper to the professor. First paper in college. First paper. I turn in my paper in college. So I'm like, man, the day came back for us to get our papers back. I'm like, bro, man, I got, I got the highest score. I know it, man. I'm a good writer. My father made me write essays all the time. I'm a good writer. So, okay, the teacher passes back the paper. It's like, Kofi Tomasi, you know they always butcher a Ghanaian name. They always butcher African names. So, Kofi Tomasi, I'm like, yeah, yeah, what's up? He's like, here's your paper. He gives me the paper. I'm smiling. I'm like, man, I killed this. I knocked this out in my sleep. I get the paper back. I had never seen so much red ink on my paper in my life. At that moment, I was like, there is no way. I have been writing essays. My father has like drilled this into me. I was in AP class. I killed it back in high school. How is my paper going to be red ink? At that moment, it was a difficult moment in my life because I realized that in order for me to get the grade I wanted, this was going to be a difficult situation for me. But I understood this. Though I did not get the best grade on the paper, Though my paper had the most red ink, I want to understand and let you all on this. Once you have a new life in Christ, he will give you a joy that will get you through your difficult situation. Because that was a difficult situation. I had never had a paper red ink like that. But I understood this. Once you have a new life in Jesus Christ, whatever difficult moment you are going through in your life, whatever adverse moment you are going through in your life, Jesus will give you the joy to get through your difficult situation. Because understand this this evening, right? Some of you, there's a lack of joy in your life. There's a lack of joy. I was talking to one of my friends. He's like, Kof, I killed in this school, but I'm having marriage problems. He's like, I can't seem to find joy. I was talking to this young man. He says, Kof, I'm going through some hard times at my home. I'm going through some hard times with trying to find a balance with Jesus Christ and my career. I'm having a hard time in life. I want you to understand this. Once Jesus Christ is in you, once you go down through the water, no matter what difficult time you are going through, Jesus Christ will give you a joy that will help you, lift you up, and get you through your difficult situations. Amen? Amen. Let, let's see what else the Spirit gives us. Once you become a new person in Christ, Christ gives you peace. What did I say Christ gives you? Christ gives you what? Christ gives you peace. I'm so glad that we not on reality to television right now, because we would have so much drama in our lives. But I want you to understand something here this evening. Once you become a new person in Christ, once you become baptized into Christ, I love what Christ gives us. He gives you the fruit of peace. Because a new life in Christ, understand this as I hit my third point this evening. I only got eight points, but I'm going to go through them quickly. It says this, once you have a new life in Christ, he will give you the inner stability that results in the ability for one to conduct himself peacefully. I, 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 I want to help you understand this point right here. You see, what happens is this. There is nothing more greater than when you are trying to get one of the women in your life, or the guy in your life, there's nothing more greater and disappointing when your best friend does what we call a robbery or cock blocks, right? There's nothing more worse when he takes the love of your life when you are trying to get that person, right? That's the worst feeling anybody could ever go through. The fact that what happens here is this. At that moment, Drama enters into one's life. You can't believe your best friend committed such a robbery on you. You can't believe your best friend, who you share secrets, could do something like that towards you. But I want you to understand this. No matter what kind of harm, no matter what kinds of danger, no matter what kind of drama comes your way, understand this. Once you have a new life in Jesus Christ, he will give you the inner ability that results in the ability for one to conduct himself 
peacefully. Amen? Amen. But what else does the Spirit give us? Galatians is key. This is what the Spirit gives us once you commit and go through baptism. Can, can, can I read the next one? The next one says, forbearance. Mm. I'm so glad God gives us forbearance once you become a new person in Christ. Can I, can I help you explain that? Let me get to point number four. Point number four is this. Tweet this, tweet this right here. Once you have a new life in Christ, he will give you the patience to exercise restraint rather than revenge. I didn't get a mercy on that one. Once you have a new life in Jesus Christ, your act of revenge, your act of being hurtful towards the person because he was hurtful towards you, once you commit yourself, you say, I want to have a fresh new walk with Jesus Christ today. I've been baptized before. But I want to have a fresh new walk with Jesus. Or I understand, preacher, what you've been saying. I want to have this kind of fruit in my life. I want you to understand that God will give you the patience. Patience is a virtue here. Patience to exercise restraint rather than revenge. Can I help you all understand this here real quick? Nelson Mandela. Served in jail for more than 20 years. In 20 years, I would have done lost my mind. I would have lost my mind if I was in jail for doing nothing. Everybody <laughs> understand this. Mandela did nothing put in jail. If I was put in jail for a crime I didn't commit, I would be upset. I would have lost my mind. I would have cursed somebody out. I would have killed myself in jail. So I'm like, there's no way I'm going to spend the rest of my life looking at a jail cell. I was like, there's no way. No way. But I, one thing, I want you to look at what Nelson Mandela, or what happened in the situation. Nelson Mandela was serving a life sentence. Serving a life sentence by God's grace. Nelson Mandela will be freed after about 27 years later. He came back. He went into prison young. I wish I could show you all that picture. He went into prison young came back old and barely even able to walk, lost his speech, because he was one time a lawyer. He lost the kind of vim, as Ghanaians would say, that he once had. But understand this. When he came out, Mandela would become the future president of South Africa a couple years later after he came out, 1996. Apartheid would end. The kind of racist system in South Africa would end. But understand this. When Mandela became president, Mandela had all the authority in the world, had all the power in the world. He's like, where are all those people who decided to put me in jail for no reason? Where are all those people who made me suffer, made me lose my family, made me lose my wife, my children, made me lose my youth? Where are all those people at? Mandela could have easily, as the president, abused his power. But I want you to understand what Mandela said. As I walked out the door toward the gate, that would lead to my freedom. I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness, everybody understand what Mandela said. He said that as I walked out into the door, if I didn't leave my bitterness, I knew I didn't leave my bitterness, my hatred. If I didn't leave it behind, I'll still be in the prison. Some of you are tight at your father and mother, right? Your father and mother have done you wrong, right? I, 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 I might as well punch them in the face. Some of you are mad at what the church has done to you, right? The repair that the church has done to you, the way they have talked about you, gossiped about you. But I want you to understand something this evening. Nelson Mandela served for life. Finally got the chance to get out, became the president, had the authority in the world. But he said that I left my bitterness and my hatred behind because I saw that I would still be in my prison. This evening, some of you are still in your prisons. Some of you are still in your prison. Can't let stuff go. 
Can't let the mess go. Can't let the things that have eaten you up go. But I'm telling you this evening, once you have a new life in Jesus Christ, once you decide to commit to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ will give you the patience to exercise restraint rather than revenge. That's what happens. That's why I gave my life to Jesus 2008. I gave my life to Jesus. I was like, look, I want to have what Scripture tells us. I want to have this fruit of the Spirit. I was only like 15, 15, 16 at that time. My bro, my brother Mills, Bright, we were, we were young. But we were like, look, we read Galatians 5, 22, 23. The fruit is like you're going to have love once you become a new person. The fruit is like you're going to have joy when you become a new person. And the fruit is saying that you're going to have patience once you become a new person. The question is, do you want this as well? That's my question. Do you want this as well? Do you want these fruits in your life? You've been baptized before, but you don't have these fruits in your life. You probably never saw these fruits get manifest in your life. I want you to understand what Nelson Mandela said. I left the bitterness. I left the hatred in 2000. I'm leaving the bitterness and hatred tonight. And I'm going to get that quality of patience because it will help me be restrained and not have revenge. But can I tell you what else the Spirit will give you? Let me tell you what else the Spirit will give you. Right? It says kindness and goodness. We're going to combine those two. They're kind of the same thing. The Greek says it's kind of the same thing. So I'm going to combine it. The Spirit will give you kindness and goodness. This is an amazing quality. They say kindness is a weakness. But I say kindness is a strength. Right? Kindness is a strength. And let me help you understand this. You see, I realize, point number five, Tweet this, Instagram, Snapchat this. Can't miss this here. Once you have a new life in Christ, he will give you kindness. Everybody understand it. He will give you kindness where you do something expecting nothing in return. Amen. Do you understand what happens here? Let me help you illustrate this. You see, back in 2011, after my freshman year of college, I went to Thailand. I went out to teach. But let me tell you my story, what happened here when I went out to teach. I was teaching Buddhist kids in Thailand. Now, I had never been to Asia. I only heard stories. I've only eaten Chinese food. I had never really experienced the Asian experience. So, I had finished my first year of college. Now, in the summer, I decided to sacrifice my summer. I should have gone back home to New York City where my parents were staying at that time. But I was like, you know what? My friend was like, hey, Kof, man, you should come on this trip with us. You should come to Thailand with us. I'm like, man, like, you're going to kill my summer. I'm trying to have a good time. I'm trying to relax. I'm going to go out there. And, you know, there's certain stereotypes that they'll give you as a black person. Because I tell you this, when I went to Thailand, it's like they had never seen a black person before. I would walk into Asia. I would be the celebrity in Asia. I remember some kid came up to me and touched my skin to see if it was real. That's how bad it was. But I'll tell you this. When I went out to Thailand... I really was not sure if I wanted to go. But I understood what point number five says this evening. Once you have a new life in Christ, he will give you kindness where you do something expecting nothing in return. Because I realized that my time in Thailand, I was teaching, I was trying to lead people to Christ, but I wasn't doing it for an award. I wasn't doing it for the medal. I wasn't doing it for the glory. But I was doing it because Christ was in me and telling me that go out there, do my will, and expect nothing in return return this evening once you have Jesus Christ after you go into the water and you come on out Jesus Christ will give you a kindness where you will do something expecting nothing in return what what else does the spirit give us what does the spirit give us faithfulness faithfulness is key what this is what happens here we can't seem to be faithful to Jesus Christ. I said in the beginning, we be cheating on Jesus Christ. We be cheating Christ like a friend with benefit. But let me get to point number six. 
Once you have a new life in Christ, you will have a faith that does not wander away from fully committing yourself to Jesus Christ. Let me help you all understand that. You see, when I was young, at the age of six, I started taking piano lessons. Now, back then, there was something called band, right? The elementary school band. Now, band, because all your friends are doing, even if you don't like playing an instrument, because all your friends are doing it, you'd be like, yeah, I'm going to join the band. I'm going to try and play a musical instrument. I'm going to be Louis Armstrong. I'm going to be Miles Davis. I'm going to be the best kind of musician. Understand what happens here. You see, I thought that playing the piano would be easy in a way. I was like, look, I got this. I could take this on. I could be playing in the church. I could be doing what I need to do. But I understood something that you must understand this evening as a quality that comes in you once you become a new person in Jesus. Can I, can I say this this evening? Once you become a new person in Jesus, he's going to give you a certain kind of faithfulness because I almost felt like giving up when I could even play barely a song on the piano. I felt like giving up when my hands couldn't coordinate with the black and the white keys. I almost gave up when I felt like I would never be as good as my church piano. I would never be able to perform in some of the highest places. But let me understand you this evening. I should have done quit. I should have done quit when I could only play Mary Had a Little Lamb. But let me help you understand this evening. Jesus Christ will give you a faithfulness that doesn't wander from any kind of commitments you were set in your life faithfulness. I'm looking for faithfulness this evening. I'm looking for faithfulness. I'm looking for people who are like, look, things are not going to go the way I want it to. But I'm, I want that spirit of faithfulness where I'll believe even if I don't see the results. I will believe even if I don't see what I wanted to see in me. Because this evening, once you go into that water and come on up, You're going to have a certain kind of faithfulness that will help guide you in your life. This evening, I'm trying to help you all understand. Who wants this fruit of faithfulness? Who wants this fruit that I want to be devoted to Christ, not part-time, not half of the time, but I want to be committed to Christ full-time? I'm looking for people this evening who have done, wandered away, forgot about Jesus Christ, forgot what Christ could do, had trouble in your life and didn't seem to remain faithful because you didn't think your situation would get better. This evening, what I am asking is, are you going to accept this fruit by going into the waters again or for the first time? Because this is the fruit of the Spirit you need in your life. That's the question I'm asking this evening. Do you want this fruit of faithfulness? Tough times in my home, but I I need faithfulness right now. I need faithfulness that maybe my parents could love me back one day. That maybe my, my, my grades can turn better one day. That maybe I can gain a devotion in Christ. Maybe I can have a prayerfulness in Christ. I want that kind of faithfulness towards Jesus Christ. But let me get to my final point. Before I hit what self control and against the law means. Let me show you here what happens. I talked about faithfulness, but I want to talk about gentleness. Can I talk about gentleness? Point number seven. I got one more point. I said I have eight points. One more point. When you live a life with Christ, you have gentleness where one's ego doesn't dominate their character. <laughs> man, man, Kofi, something tonight. Kofi, you're doing something tonight. Where one's ego will not dominate their life. You see, some of you feel like you're too cool to be a Christian. That, that's the problem today. Some of you want to be so cool to fit into the world and still have a spiritual life. See, this, this, this is what happens here. You still want to have the cool factor. You see, I, I learned a long time ago. You see, before people started, when people were started wearing baggy jeans, right, when skinny jeans came in, that was brand new. If you wore skinny jeans, you, may, you were made fun of. But I understood at a young age that you don't need to be cool to fit in. The most important thing that you need to realize 
is fitting in with Jesus Christ. Because one's ego will not dominate their character once they have a new life in Jesus Christ. Can I, can I help you explain that? I remember I was working in, 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 um, in high school. My boss was 80 years old. He should have been done retired, right? He was 80 years old. He worked in the military, but he still wanted a paycheck. The struggle is real. So he, he still wanted a paycheck. He should have done retired at 65. But this man was 80, still pushing it. Man, he was the strongest eight man. He would walk like real fast. Like this man, 80 years old, was sharp. But let me tell you something. I was a young cat. You know I got a lot of energy. So every time I come into the office, he'd be like, Kofi, I need you to do this, this, and this for me. So I was like, cool, 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 no problem. But understand what happens here as I was working for this man. You see, since he was 80 years old, technology was almost like a foreign thing to him. Right? He didn't know how to use the computer. He didn't really know how to use WhatsApp. We know our Ghanaian parents, they're they still trying to figure things out. He was a dinosaur to technology. A dinosaur to technology. But let me tell you something that I love about my boss and something that will help you out once you become a changed person and you accept the fruits of Jesus. My boss was 80. Did not know none of this technology stuff. Should have done retired because the game is changing up in the workforce. Should have done quit. But though this man has a ton of experience above me, I want you to understand what this man did. Though he was old as dirt, he said, Kof, teach me how to use this technology in the workforce. I want you to understand something this evening. This man, ego, should have never led him to ask me such a question. This man's ego should have tried and cover it up, try to act like, you know, you know how when somebody tries to act like they know how to do something, but they don't know, but they don't want to ask for help? This is what he should have done. But I want you to understand this. Once you gain the fruit of the Spirit this evening, once you go into the water, make that new commitment or recommit to Jesus Christ again, what Jesus Christ will give you is that you have gentleness where your ego it doesn't dominate your Christian life. Amen? Amen? This is what I gained when I had my immersion, when I got baptized, when I decided to commit to Jesus Christ. This is the fruit we ought to have. That today you shouldn't be too cool for the word of the Lord. You shouldn't be too cool to be attracted to a lifestyle that doesn't fit with Christ. This evening, are you going to accept this fruit of the Spirit? What happens when you become a new person in Christ? This is what you get. But can I get to my final point? It says this. Gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, kindness, forbearance, peace, joy, and love. But I love what he gives you at the end. Self-control. Can, can I get to point number eight? Point number eight says this. Everybody look at this. Tweet this. Snapchat this. Do what you need to do. Memorize this right here. When you live a life with Christ, understand this. When you, when you go into the water on Saturday, whether you've done it before or you do it again, when you have that new life in Christ, your focus towards him, your focus towards Jesus will in return have you personally gain self-control over your desires. See, this is, this, is what have, this is what's happening here. Some of us want to follow Jesus, but we don't have self-control over our desires. My boy is going to text me after this service, let's go out and drink tonight. I'm, I'm going to go out with him because for some odd reason, I don't have self-control in my life. I've heard this message this evening, but I'm still going to go on, 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 online and watch some pornography. I'm going to hit up some X videos tonight. Self-control. My thing is this this evening. Once you go into that water, whether you've done it before or you're going to do it for the first time, Jesus Christ will give you love. Once love flows through your veins, 
goes through your mind, your heart and your soul, you will gain joy, kindness, forbearance, gentleness, goodness, self-control. Where's your focus at this evening? Some of you are looking at me, listening to me, but are not going to do nothing with this word that I'm providing to you. Some of you are going to go back after hearing this message and continue to live the life, continue to have anger towards people that you thought should love you. But today, can we rewrite that script? Can we rewrite another ending to your painful life? To the divorce that's probably going on in your home? To the separation that's going on in the home? To the home that you can't seem to go to at night? Can we rewrite that this evening? That tonight, I'm going to recommit to Jesus because I need this fruit. So I, I can't help it. I just don't have self-control. I get angry for no reason. Somebody ticks me off, I'm about to fight him. This evening, who wants self-control? Do you want self-control? It just can't happen by hearing this word this evening. It happens by going into the water, coming out, coming out, rejoicing like the eunuch, like I said yesterday, coming out like a brand new person because you're going to come with love, joy, kindness, forbearance, goodness, gladness, and self-control. Until Christ is formed with you, let me, let, me show you, let me show you what happens in you. Until Christ is formed in you, love will not seek their own. Your love will not be selfish. Your love does not rejoice in iniquity, but in truth. Your love is not easily provoked. Your love thinks no evil. Your love is hot, humble. And your love behaves accordingly. This evening, Christ in you is the hope of all glory. As the praise team comes on up, as we sing our song this evening, the struggle is for sure real. Struggle is real. But like the text says this evening, I need the fruits of the Spirit. And I can only get it if I commit to Jesus through the waters. What does a new you in Christ look like? This is exactly what it looks like. This evening as I make an appeal, as the praise team sings our song this evening, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling you. 